Hello everyone, and welcome to another Electric playthrough. My name is Rob, and today I'm going to be playing Aladdin for the Sega Game Gear. Now this this, this uh, video is going to be a little bit different, because uh, I actually debated with myself as to whether or not to actually even do a video for this game because of how easy it is. It's very easy and very short, and you get unlimited lives, and even as a kid I was able to beat it. Uh, but I've been kind of thinking about getting into speedrunning a little bit, so I knew that I was good at this game, so I decided to give it a shot, and I've been practicing and practicing, and it turns out that it's actually a really great game to learn the fundamentals of speedrunning in. So I decided to make this video more of a challenge. I'm going to practice up and do kind of a speedrunning tutorial for it. So that's what I'm going to do. You start it up, and... If you're new to speedrunning, you know you want to skip cutscenes to make your time a little bit better, shave off those frames. This first level is an auto runner. Basically, you're running from a palace guard and avoiding barrels, bottomless pits, and various obstacles, just trying to make it to the end. Now, you don't need to run as Aladdin will do it automatically. And basically, you just need to move forward and back and jump and collect health to make sure that you're able to make it to the end of the stage. Do not fall in a pit and do not let the palace guard catch you because those are both instant deaths. <clears throat> so, there's not really any place to save time in this level aside from the opening cutscene, which you just skip as quick as you can. And then also, this level doesn't end until Aladdin leaves the screen on the right. So, to make that happen as quickly as possible, we are going to save some frames, shave off some ending level frames uh, coming up, and you'll know when it's time to move all the way to the right side of the screen to shave off those frames when you see these two barrels followed by that bottomless pit. If you're done with obstacles, just get over there in the level as quickly as possible. Skip the cutscene. Level 2 is very similar to level 1, except that Jasmine isn't trying to catch you, she's just running along with you. Um, avoid getting smushed against the left side of the screen or falling down these gaps. And uh, there are five gaps to skip, and it'll be the same thing. Once you get over those five gaps, you want to get all the way to the right side of the screen to shave off those end-of-level frames. Uh, another good indicator that you're coming up on your final gap is this apple. Once you get to that apple, you know that you have one more gap, which is right here, and then get all the way to the right side and shave off those frames. <clears throat> okay, skip the cutscene. Then level three is our first, I guess you'd call it more of a standard level. Um, not an auto runner. Ugh, you need to get good at figuring out where the edges of things are so you can grab hold easier. Climbing up and down can uh, definitely add time to your run. Jump over those, slide, slide. Pull back so you don't get hit by that rock. And stairs are kind of Castlevania style, where you have to kind of push at an angle. There we go. You can get over spikes by crouching and pushing the jump button. Oops. There we go. There. And it's going to be a death-defying leap to the right. Jump the spikes. The platforming here can be a little bit treacherous. If you know what you're doing, it's not too bad. You want to sprint and slide to avoid that rock. Save a little bit of time. Castlevania stairs. Alright, and this we're going to do it all one motion. Jump and slide. Pick things up by crouching over them. Turn, throw, slide. Now for this part, you want to jump exactly where I jump to avoid falling in the pits, the geyser, and the bat. Oh no, that's not good. Well, if you time that jump right, you can avoid all those obstacles, but I hit that rock and lost a little bit of time. That's fine. Now this next level is not an auto runner, but you want to treat it like one. You want to just run the whole time. One, two, three, and four. If you've ever seen the movie, you know you need to avoid all the treasure. After you see that second pillar, jump over that rock. Yeah, touching the treasure will kill you instantly, as will falling in the pits, and there you go. It's not an auto runner, but you treat it like one. And then Abu ruins it for everyone, if you've ever seen the movie. And this level is your first auto carpet level. 
Uh, basically, just avoid rocks and debris, pick up health items. It looks a lot more treacherous than it really is. You're going to get hit by stuff, which is fine, because there are a lot of health items. And speaking of which, there are three loaves of bread in this level, and you want to keep track of that. And I'll show you why once we get to that third loaf. So you just avoid things as best you can, avoid smacking your head on the rocks, because if you hit it just right, it will be an instant death. So, there's your second loaf of bread, and then the third one comes up here pretty quickly, and when that happens, what you want to do whew, is grab it, push forward, and ascend. Shave off those end-of-level frames. And then, this next level is the longest and most maze-like of all the levels. But if you follow my path, you'll get through it no problem. Grab the key. You want to keep track of the amount of rocks you pick up because you need them to get past the guards. Essentially, this level is a stealth level. Stop right here before that gold stripe on the wall. Run, and then when you get to the edge, slide. Turn and jump. Up, and then grab this key, and then behind this third pillar is a hidden rock. You're going to need that, so make sure you grab it, even though you can't see it. There we go, right up there. And you want to just take off running right here to avoid these chandeliers and a palace card that will uh, auto-chase you. But if you run, you shouldn't have any problem. See, didn't even see him. Let yourself drop, pick up a rock, go on down. This part, you just want to go. Just pretend like he's not there. As long as you make it down those stairs immediately, he won't be a problem. Another rock, slide down, jump, jump, and down the stairs. Do your pull up as quick as you can to avoid that palace guard, run to the edge, throw the rock, jump back up, and you're ready to slide. If you don't slide, you either get hit by the chandelier or have to wait for it to fall. But sliding will stop that. There we go. I think ideally it wants you to continue to the left, but this is quicker. As soon as you see him, let him flip the switch for you and go. Now this next part, careful not to mess this up and slide into him, or to hit him too early because he will kill you. Ooh, yeah, you want to grab that key and run past him as quickly as you can. Just leave that rock on the ground. You won't need it. Get ready to jump. Get you to that button, throw your rock. Last rock, drop, turn around, throw, and just finish the level. Not too bad once you have it memorized. And then we have another auto carpet level. This one's a little bit less stressful than the last one, although it can be a little annoying. It is possible to die from the amount of stuff flying through the air. But just enjoy the music. I don't know what this horse's problem is. He's, he's super chill in the movie, but... With birds as we travel around the world. And watch out for what I guess are raspberry trees? I don't know. Not too hard to avoid. And we'll come up to another city. Good song. Avoid the buildings, because they will kill you instantly. And then once you see these two birds, thread the needle and push all the way to the right to shave off those end-of-level frames that I hate so much. And now, our final auto-runner is also our most difficult. We're chasing Jafar, if you stay all the way to the left, you can avoid chandeliers and his lightning bolts. 
and give you good reaction time to jump over the fire he drops. <clears throat> Oop. There we go. Stay back. It's really not too hard. Oof, that's a tough one right there. But right here, I'm about to get a series of long jumps. When you see the short jump, hang back right here and go. And then catch up to him because you have to wait for Aladdin to run up to him. So once again, we're shaving off end of level frames. And here we go, moving up to the final boss. What you want to do is you can't run in this level. You want to get right up on him so he drops that fireball at his feet. One hit from the sword, which will kill you if it lands on you. Makes him go into his second and final phase and just start slapping him with the sword. Every time you hit him, he will knock you back, but if you're right here, his fireball will hold you in place unless you get a free hit to end the boss quicker. And you can't run, like I said, so sprint or er, hopping forward is really your quickest movement option. And there it is. That is Aladdin for the Game Gear. <clears throat> now, um... I don't have the world record or anything like that, but I think that's a pretty decent speed run. And I think this is a really great game to speed run because it's short, it's not too difficult, it has a password save system so you can jump around and practice any level you want. I think it's just a lot of fun overall. This game did a really good job of recreating the movie storyline with the cutscenes. Like this right here, it seems like you're about to fight him again, but really this is just the end of the movie where a genie turns Jafar into another genie and this is actually a longer cutscene than it actually takes to beat the game when you're speedrunning. But um, yeah, I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, I had a lot of fun practicing this speedrun and, and putting together some, some helpful tips. And thanks for watching.